Hi, welcome to Sean's Game Academy. Module 2 Collision Detection and Gravity If you don't want your game character to fall through the floor, we're going to need something called Collision Detection. We use this to determine if objects in the game, in this case the character, are touching other things in the game, like walls or the floor or anything else we want to touch. Launch the project and let's get started. For collision detection to work, we'll need to make some sensors. For the left side, the right side and for the feet of our character. The foot sensor will help us with gravity. No time to waste. In this project, we've made some sensors. These are just normal block sprites and we'll use these to detect if our sprite is touching other game elements. But we need one thing, variables. A variable is a bit like a container where we can store info and refer back to it at a later date. So, sensors detect if game objects like our character are touching other game elements and we can make the game react accordingly by setting a variable. Here's an example. You can't run through walls or jump in the air when your feet aren't touching anything. And whether your feet are or are not touching anything is what we store inside the variable. Firstly, we need to make sure the game is broadcasting the correct messages. We will need to create two new messages, collision detect and update sensors. Remember, they need to be in this order shown. We need to make sure the sensor is listening to update sensors and make it follow the character. For the sensors to work properly, they will need to stick to the character sprite. Select the right sensor and in the scripts tab, Place the script shown. Copy this code on the foot sensor and left sensor sprites. You can copy a code easily by right clicking on it and then dragging and dropping it over the next sprite. Now all sensors will follow the character sprite. Now to variables. We will need to create three global variables. Touching left, touching right, and touching foot. In the data section of the menu, select make a variable to create them as shown. For this bit, we do not need to select a specific sprite. With variables, you can choose if they are for all sprites, global, or for this sprite only, local. This time we want all variables to be for all sprites. Now we need to make a little level or some platforms to bump against. Create a new sprite, select the costumes tab and use the vector mode which lets you move things around after you've made them. We made a U shape. The next thing we're going to do is set the variables in the level to turn from false to true if any of the character sensors touches it. On your level sprite, Add the code shown here. We can now use these variables in the character to limit its movements to the left and to the right if the character hits a wall. What the code is saying is, if I'm not touching a wall on my right hand side and I have the right arrow pressed, then go right. It's the exact same for left. Also, we have sneakily added some gravity to the character which gives downward momentum if the character's foot isn't already resting on anything. This is all good, but at the moment we can only hit a wall once and we can't move in that direction again. So we now need to reset the variable at the beginning of every frame. To keep things tidy, we need to broadcast an entire event called reset frame variable and put this inside the game loop on the game sprite. The main game sprite will now reset the sensors every time the loop happens, which is about 30 times a second. Wow! When you press the green flag, the character should fall to the floor, and when you run him into a wall, he should stop. If he doesn't, double check your scripts. Excellent work! You've mastered some really tricky things in this module. If you're ready to move on, let's launch Module 3.